What's up guys? Thank you for joining me on this episode of My Living Legacy. And this episode is about 75 Hard 2.0. So, a lot of you followed me through my 75 hard journey uh, this past year, and I learned a lot about myself in those 75 days. But I think I may have learned even more about myself in the days following those 75, in the last few weeks, the end of this year. And a lot of what I've learned about myself and what I've gone through is what has really propelled me and motivated me to go right back in as we start this new year and do 75 hard all over again. And so in this episode, I really wanna break down why I'm doing it again and what maybe I didn't learn last time that I'm hoping will become the defining moments of this next 75 days. So the best place to start is day 76. <laughs> you know, throughout the 75 Heart Challenge, there's so many different defining moments, these like transformational moments, these mindset flips and switches and these things that you go through when you're pushing yourself that hard on a daily basis. Especially if you're doing it the right way. If you're really going all in on the workouts. If you're really pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone further than you've ever gone before. There were so many moments where, man, like I, honestly, I felt unstoppable. Like I felt like there was nothing that I couldn't accomplish because mentally I was strong enough to be able to handle it. I remember I had a conversation with uh, Andy Frisella and we were talking about that. He was like, you know, what's, what's the biggest thing you, your takeaway is and what's the biggest feeling? I was like, man, I just, I just feel like there's nothing that someone right now could ask me to do that I couldn't do because I know I'm mentally strong enough to do it. And that's what it's all about because your mind will take you further than your body can take you. And this is not a physical challenge. Yes, there are physical elements to it, a lot of physical elements to it, but it is a mental challenge. And as I talked about in, in previous episodes, the reality that potential doesn't even exist because it's infinite. Like when you take yourself further than you've ever gone before, you realize how much more you have left and how much more you're capable of. And I just don't think that ever stops. I don't think you ever get to a point where you're like, yes, I'm here. This is my potential. That would be called death. Because what would you want to live for at that point? But going into day 76 and the weeks that, that uh, came after, man, <sighs> It's, it's almost hard to describe, but I felt lost. Like I, without that rigid structure that I had been in for 75 days, I just felt myself just kind of like floating through life. And, you know, as I was approaching the end of, of the challenge, I remember saying to myself and to others, and yeah, I'll probably, I'm probably just gonna do like a modified version, maybe scale it back a little bit, or I may do it five days a week, but then on the weekend, I'll, I'll kind of make it a little bit more relaxed. The reality what happened is I went right back to where I was before the challenge. Like I went right back to the things I was doing and the things that I weren't doing that I needed to be doing right before the challenge. And that's a problem. And that shows me that I didn't learn what I was supposed to learn to the challenge. But what I realized when the challenge was over is I don't know if I yet have it ingrained in me for me to be able to do that for myself. Now, part of me would say that's not necessarily a weakness. It's more of an awareness. I do think that I have more growing and maturing and learning and evolving to do. Because I've often said on, on this vlog or on an episode of the podcast that you know, we can't hold ourselves accountable to reach the highest level of success and performance and execution, that we can hold ourselves very well at being mediocre. We can even hold ourselves accountable to be good, above average, but to reach that like top 1%, like we have to have people and processes in place to get us there. But I think there's a balance of 
the mental toughness along with the structure to where when the structure goes away, the mental toughness takes over. When the public accountability goes away, the personal mindset takes over. And for me, it didn't. I failed at that. And so that's the reason why I'm doing 75 hard again. It's to really ingrain those things in me, to ingrain that mental toughness in me, to ingrain that discipline in me, to where beyond the public accountability and not being able to fail publicly, I can be just as tough internally. And that I can do the things that I'm supposed to do simply because it's what I'm supposed to do, not because I know other people are gonna see whether or not I did it. And so we're gonna do 75 hard again here in the coming week. And uh, I'm excited about it, um, nervous about it again. Um, just as anything that you're trying to attempt, that's great. There's going to be some nerves. Um, but I really want people to be able to experience this with me. And I would challenge you that if you followed me last time through this journey, that there's no better way for you to be able to adopt this and to hold yourself accountable by doing it with other people. And I would love to be able to interact with you back and forth and for us to be commenting on each other's posts and monitoring each other's progress and see the transformations take place. Those that did it with me last time, like it was, it was almost as fun watching them grow as it was watching myself grow, uh, watching Pablo grow, you know, right next to me. But then people all across Instagram, uh, people here in Greenville that started doing the challenge and me being able to see this change in them and then to be able to talk about that change was, it was amazing. It was awesome. And so I want to have more of that. But I think, you know, how I want to take this conversation is, is in a little bit of a different place. Andy did a video um, maybe a week or so ago and it, it talked about the real goal and the real mindset behind 75 hard. And man, it just hit me because it was exactly what I was going through. And he talked about you know, happiness, fulfillment, success. It really just boils down to on a daily basis, being able to go to sleep, proud of the effort that you put in that day. Being able to at the end of the day, look back on the things that you did, on the things that you accomplished, and being able to feel that sense of pride in your effort, that sense of pride in your accomplishment, that sense of pride in knowing that you honored your word, that you said you would do these things and you did those things. And guys, this translates beyond 75 hard. It translates beyond getting that second cardio workout in outside at 11 p.m. at night. It translates into making those 100 phone calls that you said you were gonna make in your job. And did you make 90 or did you make 110? And at the end of the day, feeling pride for accomplishing what you said you would do. And that's really it, guys. If you wanna join me, there's no sign up form, there's no nothing. Just Google 75 hard, you'll see all the things, the two workouts a day, the diet, the progress pick every day, reading 10 pages. You'll see all that, how to do it. You'll figure it out. And I'd love for you to join me. It was probably the most impactful 75 days that I've ever experienced in my entire life. I can't wait to see what the next 75 entails. And I truly cannot wait to see what unfolds in your life if you take hold of this as well. So with that, guys, I appreciate you joining me on this episode of My Living Legacy. And man, take some time and think about it because chances are there's something going on right now in your heart, in your stomach, that gut feeling like, man, I should probably do this. And if that's you, why not? So with that, we'll see you soon.